What is the situation that Bo Nix is stepping into with the Denver Broncos to start his career? We're evaluating that today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who make Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Joseph, happy Friday, May 10th. Uh, we are, what, 10 weeks, 9 weeks from training camp? Something like that. Be here before Soon. we know it. So We got a lot to do, including do. finishing about- this contest. Yeah, we do. We do. Don't forget Mother's Day this weekend. It's important. Yeah, do not don't, do not dare forget Mother's Day this weekend. Those of you who, yeah. uh, it's applicable to all of us. It's one of those nice things about that holiday, right? <laughs> we all got anybody one of those, who came right? into the world. <laughs> Y'all yeah. got one of those, or else we wouldn't be here. So right. don't forget. Um, let's get into Bonix. You kind of teased on our first show of the day that this might be a more interesting conversation. Uh, Because this is a very interesting team with the resources they have and had not had available. Uh, Knicks is the sixth first-round quarterback, which set a record for first-round quarterbacks. So let's get into it with the coach. Isn't that crazy? We we got the record record for first-round quarterbacks in half the round. That's insane. In in effectively a third of the round. Right. Like to get five in 2018, the Ravens had to trade back in and get Lamar at 32. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we get we get this done in was it 13 we, picks or something? 12. Uh, Denver was 12, and the Raiders 12. were 13. If there was a, if there was a seventh quarterback, the Raiders would have probably taken him at 13. Right. Brock Bowers or was the guy. The same. Don't don't let Terry and Arnold tell you differently. It wasn't no coin flip. Antonio Pierce said it was Brock Bowers all the way. You hear call. about this story? Did you see the story? Yes, I did. I did. What a weird thing to put out there, and then what a weird thing to have to address if you're Antonio Pierce. Right. Yeah, Terry and Arnold. I, I probably would have just not called Terry and Arnold. Yeah, right. Right? Nothing to say. Do, do nothing teams to call say. every player they didn't do teams always call every player they didn't draft me like, hey man, we were real close. <laughs> I would guess that never happens. Right, I would guess that never happens. So right. I would just, I would just not call the player he didn't draft. Would be what I, how I would choose to handle that. So I digress. All right, we uh, we are evaluating Denver. Bo Nix across five, cat, six categories: coaching, quarterback room, pass catchers, run game, offensive line, and defense. Scale of one to five. One is a fail. Five is amazing. Three is in the middle, so that's average. So we will look at this team through those following lenses to consider how Bo Nix is set up to have success in his career. We will start with coaching head coach of the Denver Broncos, Sean Payton. I think the resume there speaks for itself, uh, was able to orchestrate an offense that produced the NFL's all time leading passer in drew Brees. And what I loved about that marriage was like, they just did their stuff, man. And nobody could stop it. You know, like Mm -hmm. it wasn't, It wasn't this like revolutionary offense or anything like that. He's like, we are just going to execute. Drew Brees is going to make throws and it it doesn't matter. We're going to have different supporting casts all the time. We are going to make it happen. And then of course, Sean Payton is really surrounded by a lot of very familiar coaches that he's had success with. Whether that's the offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, who was with him forever in new Orleans. Of course, we didn't love the two years that he had with Justin Herbert in Los Angeles, but I think with Sean Payton, that's a really good guy to have with him. Pete Carmichael, part of this this staff who obviously was with Sean Payton forever in, in New Orleans. They have John Morton, who's the past game coordinator, had that one fun season in 2017 with the Jets, and then you know, like that was about it, but a guy that's been around a lot in the NFL. And then their quarterback's coach is Davis Webb, who 
if you talk to anybody that knows Davis Webb, they rave about this guy in terms of like his future and coaching. I, I mm-hmm. could tell you the Bills offered them their their quarterback coach job, and he wanted to play one more year. He wound up going to the Giants. And for this guy to like very quickly go from player to quarterback's coach, everybody raves about him. And I think that's kind of a fun like layer to this. Uh, obviously, he was the quarterback's coach last year. But you have all this familiarity between Peyton and Lombardi and Carmichael, and now here's like an, another set of eyes and a new perspective in the room. I think this is fantastic coaching for Bo Nix. Yeah, I really like this infrastructure a lot. And the foil of a promising but inexperienced quarterbacks coach to go with all the experience like you just said, um, I think makes it very easy to embrace the entirety of the group that's going to be around Bo Nix. And look, Sean Payton's uh, playbook just got its moment in the sun thanks to Chase Daniel this week. Did you see that? I saw it, but I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. So Dan Orlovsky was like, hey, here's my playbook from this year. And here's all the sections and all the information that rookies have to learn. And they teach two, three times, blah, 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 blah. And then Chase Daniel was like, all right, here's my Sean Payton playbook. And Dan did a lot of macro. Let's do the micro. Here's one play. And all the things that you need to be accounting for in one play in the install from Sean Payton. And it's like a four minute video. And it gets into the play call and how it's. Uh, gun king which is the the personnel grouping and then there's a run call with a motion for the f back that then you can kill based on what prompts you to kill and then you get into the passing game and the tags for the passing game and it's it's very very good like nfl west coasty lingo 101 And I think that's the thing as I've kind of got back into that kind of content consumption and uh, football education at this time of year, which is really the only realistic time that there is to do that. A lot of J2 Sullivan QB school type stuff for me, a lot of the courses that he has. um, The more answers that you can provide on any given play, the better. And I think that's the thing where I liked what you said about the Sean Payton offense. It was nothing revolutionary, right? It was, we're going to provide the quarterback with as many answers as possible to as many problems that could be presented as possible. And at the line of scrimmage, he's going to diagnose the defense, make a proper post-snap reaction, throw the ball to the right guy, and we're going to have uh, crazy numbers on offense every year as a result. Yeah, And I think that with time, if given time for Bo Nix, can be plenty replica- replicatable, not to the same degree as what it was with Drew Brees, because nobody wants to put those expectations on anybody. But I like this group a lot. I give this a 4.25. Four and a half for me. Okay. Did, was uh was it Ryan Tannehill um on hard knocks, nope. maybe one year the Dolphins had him? And uh do you remember him Order. with his wife? Come on, this is actually a good story. With, with the index cords, the index cards like going through the plays. If I was an NFL quarterback, so. my, my poor wife, yeah, she'd be doing that all the time. <laughs> We'd have to so. be able to get it figured out. That, I'm sure learning strategy has got to be a big deal. Uh, with these quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So that's a good transition to the quarterback room, Kyle Krabs. Yeah, the quarterback room has a lot of inexperience in it. Uh, you have a player. Well, 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 time out. These are the future kings of the AFC East, Kyle Krabs. Zach Wilson right. and Jarrett Stidham yeah. were supposed to run the division. Right. What happened? Yeah, Stidham, Stidham was pegged as the, the heir to Tom Brady. Saw him on the chair, Zach Kyle. I saw him on the king's chair. What happened? the guy, right? <laughs> Zach Couldn't trade away from Zach a, Wilson right at the number two pick. That's locked and loaded, baby. Uh, has his own experiences with expectations, gets a fresh start in Denver, which is closer to what back home is for him, which will probably be helpful. I think at the very least, Zach can give Bo Nix the uh, who's who of what or the what's what of what not to do as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Um, but in the same way that you alluded to, when talking about Minnesota on our last show um, and McCown as the quarterback's coach, I think Davis Webb serves as the mentor here that he does not have in Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson. Davis Webb's been around some success, which is, which is good. Mm-hmm. But you, you can't love this, right? You can't love Zach Wilson, Jared no. Stidham, and Bo Nix as your quarterback room. 
Who you your redeeming this- player is Stidham, who has a at least he has a year with Peyton, right? Last year, if I'm not mistaken, was he part of this team? Or my was, was yes, it my? Was. I'm like, okay, I want to make sure I'm not whiffing on that. I give this a two. I give this a two. A two. Yeah. All right, I'm we got pass page catchers, page. pass catchers, run game. That's coming up here in just a moment. So be sure to stick with us. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising costs of inflation to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news data and tools that you need in order to help you reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. So whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need all in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your financial success path. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. YahooFinance.com. That's YahooFinance.com. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Peter's having a real hard time today. Transitions okay. don't want to roll. Sorry. Right. We're back and we're talking about the running game for the Denver Broncos next here on the show. And we'll get into the offensive line separately. Uh, but I, I think the conversation for the running game probably starts with the offensive line when you consider Garrett Bowles and Ben Powers and Quinn Miners and Mike McGlinchey is all tenured yeah. starters from last year's group. Uh, they obviously lose Lloyd Cushenberry in free agency to the Titans. I think he got twelve and a half million per. I think it was a four-year, fifty-five million dollar contract. Yeah. Is the, the total contract there. Uh, so Luke Wattenberg, Alex Forsyth, kind of your contenders to step into that spot. Um, the backs behind it, Javante Williams, a year removed from coming back off of a significant injury, hopefully gets a little bit more of his burst and juiced back. Uh, you have a really nice third round back who can pass protect and Samaj P. Ryan. Uh, and then you have a fifth round pick in, in this year's NFL draft in Audric Estemi uh, from Notre Dame, a really physical player. Uh, long speed's not what he's known for, but fairly agile for a player of his stature. And then Jaleel McLaughlin showcased a little something, something for the Broncos last year. I know that's kind of a role player that the Broncos fans are really excited about. So I think there's some depth to this backfield, which can help them. And I I would say them not doing more to add to this room gives me a level of confidence and their confidence in Javante Williams to continue Mm -hmm. kind of rounding back into form because he was so exciting as a rookie. Um, And then, of course, the ACL, what week four, week five in 2022 came back, had moments, but didn't seem to have the same pop that you're used to seeing from Javante Williams at North Carolina. And then, of course, with Denver, um, we'll do the offensive line when it's time to do the offensive line. Um, but it's, it's interesting that they really didn't they didn't really replace Lloyd Cushenberry, right? They're kind of really counting on Luke Wattenberger uh, to step in or Alex Forsyth. But. I think that, like you mentioned, the other four spots here are really good, and I think they specialize in run blocking. So I think there's a lot to like here about this run game. Yeah. I gave this a 3.25. Uh, that's what I have it at, 3.25. So, Joe, for all of the talk about us maybe seeing this group differently, uh, we were a quarter point different on the coaching. We were the same in the quarterback room, and we were 
a quarter point different on the run game. Let's see what the what pass say. catchers bring us. The pass catchers for the Denver Broncos wide receiver, Cortland Sutton. Just keep them. Just keep them, Denver. Like, what are we doing here? Keep them. You've already traded away <laughs> Jerry Judy. Uh, this room does not look good without Cortland Sutton. So keep him around. Josh Reynolds brought into the mix after several seasons at Detroit. Size, body control. Um, I think more of a wide receiver, 3-4. Marvin Mims uh, seems like he's making plays every time he gets a chance to. Young player out of Oklahoma, a lot of athleticism to his game. And then, of course, Tim Patrick, who had a promising season three years ago, and I don't think Denver's going to forget it uh, because they're really sticking <laughs> sticking with him here through a couple of uh, seasons where they were lost due to injury. And then, of course, they get Before Troy Franklin. Starting. Right, right. They're, like, real serious about Tim Patrick, it feels like. And then Troy Franklin. um, Bo Nix's go-to receiver at Oregon. They wind up getting him in the fourth round of the draft. At tight end, Greg Dulcich, really, really good-looking young tight end. He's had this hamstring problem, though, for the last couple of years. So we need that to go away so that Greg Dulcich can resume his career as one of the bright young tight ends in the league. Of course, they do have Adam Troutman as their hedge there. And then running back, Javante Williams, Samaje Pirine, who really does kind of specialize in third down, uh, Estemi McLaughlin, um, but really, Javante Williams, would you think of him as – I they probably want to throw the ball to McLaughlin. I don't know that there's like a plus receiving back here. Um, Pirine maybe, but a decent group all in all. I definitely would love for Greg Dulcich to be healthy. I would love to not trade away Cortland Sutton, and I'd really love for Troy Franklin to become a thing for them quicker than a fourth-round pick tri traditionally is. Uh, yeah, I'm a little scared for what this is going to come together and look like. I'm scared that they're going to trade Sutton. Sutton, this is not a good room without Cortland Sutton at all. all right. Um, I am a avid member of the Church of Greg Dulcich. I won't quit it, but I just traded for him in Dynasty we, Fantasy. So, okay, you're you're riding, but uh, we we do need to see it come together, right? So it's got to keep the hamstring. I think healthy, there's man. questions. Uh, Marvin Mims seemed like he never really got Sean Payton's trust last year. Right, it felt like there was should've. just limited opportunities. He should have. I I know he made I know he made plays, but again, that that whole Chase Daniel clip going into the depth of what you have to be accounting for in every single play. Hopefully, another year in the system will allow Marvin Mims to kind of have a little bit more trust from the coaching staff. Um. I think it's a below average group with potential to be an average group. If Dulcich hits and you keep Cortland Sutton and he stays healthy, like I could maybe give this a 3.25. I give this a 2.5. Mm, I come in at a three. Um, not that we're super different, but assuming they do keep Cortland Sutton, get Marvin Mims going, stay healthy Dulcich. Like I think this is this is fine. But we don't have a lot of margin for fine. error. Fine is probably the best way to describe it. Yeah. But um, I wish I liked it more, I, I think I would say. For being the sixth quarterback who's got good coaching, man, you could get really excited about this group when you consider there's some sta stability along the offensive line, some potential with the run game. I would really love it if you had what you felt was like an asset to the, maybe not necessarily the extreme of Minnesota or, or Chicago, but um, Atlanta, one more piece. Yeah. One, one more good piece that I think they're missing. Yeah. I think it would give me a little bit more peace of mind. So, and they might be losing one in Cortland Sun. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't trade them. All right. Offensive line defense coming up. And then of course, our final tally here is we will conclude evaluating these first-round quarterback situations, so be sure to stick with us. Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you, and it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than what's going on with our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's not just for people who've experienced major trauma. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. 
It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Just visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn. That'll get you 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOn. Hey, the transition played on time this time, so it was good. Left us without that lingo. In lingo. I was wondering what happened. Did you push it twice? What happened there? No, I, I clicked it, and it was just like it was like registered that it played, but it didn't actually wow. play until after about five seconds. It wasn't like you quick snap me like you, you've done from time to time. I tried. I've been I trying actually, so hard to not do that. I'm like, and coming up in just a moment, <laughs> so be <laughs> sure, Kyle push the really button. Loud. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're floating around producing this thing, doing a couple things at the same time, but that's okay. We're going to get into the offensive line, which we've already teed up a little bit uh, for the Broncos. The dynamic here that's different is the departure of Lloyd Cushenberry, but I correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Denver like not miss, have any starters miss a game on the offensive line last year? Really? Um, is okay, that so I, yeah, here you go. You you had Garrett Bowles played 1,072 snaps offensively. It was 100% of the offensive snaps. Lloyd Cushenberry played 1,069 snaps, so he missed three snaps. Ben Powers missed or played 1,067 snaps. That was five snaps. Uh, Quinn Miners played 1,037 snaps, so that's still 97% of the snaps. And then Mike McGlinchey, uh, the fifth starter played 946 snaps. So I guess he missed like a game. He played 88% of the snaps. Yeah, he missed one game. So their entire offensive line missed one game helpful. last year. It's very helpful. Must be nice. I, Must I be you. nice. I Mr. recommend 13 it. I really different do. offensive line combinations last year. Got crumbums the, the, out there playing. The, the Panthers guard. might the pan in the what is the Jets? What do we what do we call this? Like where you're the Suck Olympics? The, the Panthers might have something to it's say about Jets. that. With what's that? The Jets had the most. The Jets. I mean, okay. the Jets were, were horrible last year. I think they had 14 different offensive line combinations. Well, I think I mean adding Tyron Smith to the mix and his durability. Yeah, great idea. All it's right, great, um, great anchor there. <laughs> So a lot of stability with the offensive line, except for we mm -hmm. did lose Lloyd Kishenberry, a bright young center. And the plan is kind of sticking with some players that we have here. And, and Luke Wattenberger is a, I always say Wattenberger. I don't think that's true. It's just Wattenberg. Wattenberg. I always do yeah, that to him. And then of course uh, the Alex Forsyth to the mix. I, obviously you've downgraded there. I think you're hoping that, um, I mean, you got, looks like you got a star in the making here in Quinn Miners. He's probably going to get all the money after this season, right? Yeah. Like, the next hundred million yeah, dollar guard, Quinn Miners. Yeah, and then I you're—I so. mean—you're paying McGlinchey and, and Powers market deals, and Bulls continues to be a reliable player. You're really solid at four spots. Um, just a matter of this center can step in and hopefully be seamless for them. And even if it's not seamless, I think he is a different kind of player, right? Out of Washington was six four three hundred. Cushionberry's a little bit more of a. I'll say a power center, but like, there's a little bit more physicality in his game. But I think the familiarity will help. And that is a spot where if you have strong players around it on either side, as long as your football IQ is in line, and I had no reason to not believe that for Luke Wattenberg, like I think he'll be okay. Do I think it's a downgrade? Yes. But um, I think the complexion of the offensive line, uh, you love the steps that Quinn Miners has taken. Uh, Garrett Bowles has been a long time staple there. I think this is, uh, there, there are two big off season additions last year, which obviously they gave all the money to Mike McGlinchey and Ben powers. You maybe wish there was in a vacuum, better players for the money that you were giving them. But I, I think the total sum is a good offensive line, which is why I checked in with them at a 3.75. I think an important note for this offensive line, and maybe they've had their own celebratory party over this, they don't have to block for Russell Wilson anymore. And Russell Wilson right. is the quarterback last year that was responsible for the most pressure. That's the fault of the quarterback in the entire mm -hmm. NFL. Him. So that, that I mean, could you, you have a Bo Nix quick trigger, at least based on what he was asked to do at Oregon, but also very good second reaction player. I think that's going to be, 
a much more welcomed opportunity not having to block for that guy who invites his own pressure. I mean, him and Jalen Hurts are a comfortable 3 4% higher than the than next. Everybody else. Yeah, than everybody else. So, What did you give it? Oh, that's an important part of this. I was so excited to share that. Uh, what did I give the offensive line? I gave it a 3.75. Okay, so we're on the same page there. It's almost like we've been I doing a lot I wish I liked McGlinchey more. I wish I liked McGlinchey more. Um, in fact, the did right tackle why, position. Did you see why he and Tremaine Emmons didn't get third round? Yeah, yeah. Picks, well, let's not do this. Well, yeah. Fake because the NFL is oh counting fake money. Yeah, it's garbage. Gar- you better watch out for what's going on with, with your guys, man. Oh my, oh, my God. Well, yeah, put Robert Hunt right on the bubble. He needs to play like right. every game for Miami to get three for Robert Hunt now. <laughs> but I guess my question is, they're counting restructures as new contracts, and we're not going to get into the whole thing right now. But right. I did want to ask you the question. They're counting restructures as new contracts where it's the total money. They count the total cap collection, but only the active and non-void years of, of the new contract after the restructure. Right. That's not how void years work. Right. Right. I think Brandon Bean so, has a legitimate gripe about this whole thing. And I, I get the argument for not counting every year. If a player's not under contract to play, but if a player's not under contract with void years, all of the money accelerates to the first year that they do not play for the team. So why would you not count the the first year, the first void year? Because that it's guaranteed, unless there's a contract extension, it's guaranteed that that money is going to toll in the third year when you're calculating the average of the contract. There's not a, there's not a good answer for it. Like Eric Armstead, his AAV when he restructured with San Francisco was $28 million because he had two years and then they put void years on the back end of it. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, they got hosed. They got hosed on a third round pick. Um, What are we doing? By the way, Mike McGlinchey, the right tackle position for the Broncos, seventh highest pressure, uh, (laughs) responsibility of pressure. Is the right tackle situation uh, of all offensive tackles, right? He was like the seventh of yeah, so like top, all of your team pressure. The amount yeah. that he conceded was the seventh highest of any offensive tackle in the NFL last year. Yeah. He's always been yep. a better run blocker than a pass protect. Right. Right. 3.75. Defense. Defense. Yep. All right. So a trade for John Franklin Myers for a bag of peanuts. I think that's a great ad for them. Uh, they got DJ Jones, Zach Allen. Uh, they bring in Cody Barton to go with Alex Singleton after losing Josie Jewell. They got some youth with with Baron Browning, Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper, Jonah Ellis as a third round draft pick. They got a typo on the edge, right? And they continue Clearly. to go after it. Uh, they've moved on from Justin Simmons. Uh, the two bright spots in the secondary are obviously Pat Sertan and uh, Jaquan McMillan as the nickel really showed up in a big way for them. I think that's a player that they have every right to be very excited about. I'm going to be honest. I don't really like the back seven. We got worse side for sure, right? Yeah. Yes. And I know Simmons is slowing down, but if you, if you ask me like, Hey, who's definitively like your assets in the back seven? Say like, Alex Singleton's an adequate level starter. Sertan's one of the best corners in the game. There's no question there. Mm-hmm. And then Shaquan Millen, McMillan's like a pleasant surprise at nickel. And I know Caden Stearns has flashed a little bit. I think they grossly overpaid Brandon Jones to not know what he's doing back there. I I got just got questions in the back seven. I don't really like the group outside the front, to be honest with you. You should. And, and like Damari Mathis was such a problem for them last year. They wind up putting Fabian Moreau in and that wind up being helpful. And then we really didn't do anything to help that. Like we're going to sign Levi Wallace, who was a liability for Pittsburgh. They need, they need Riley Moss to become a thing as a third round pick in 2023. Mm-hmm. Like that needs to happen here. Definitely. Just to, per, to provide some stability here. I'm, I, I'm, I think that's a very fair criticism. I, I'm not, I am not loving this back seven. I gave it a two. I think it was two and a half. So I'm a little I'm a little higher because I kind of like some of their front. I like their mix of rushers. Certain, sir. I, you kind of ruin a guy like Certain without having anybody near him, right? Like 
okay, we just right. won't it throw it to so because everyone else is available. Yeah. Makes it so easy what? to mitigate him. What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, we got to get this tightened up. All right, back so you, here. You, you thought fairly highly of this situation for Denver. You gave it a 19. Is that what? So, what, what are you? Can you read back the grades? Okay. Maybe I got something wrong. Four and a half coaching. Yep. Two for the quarterback room. Yes. 3.25 for the run game. Yep. Okay. That's where I had it. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Three for the pass catchers. Mm hmm. 3.75 for the offensive line and then a two and a half for the defense. That's right. I, I bumped it in our conversation. I bumped up uh, one of the, it was a run game. I bumped it up a quarter of a point. Got it. And I just forgot to log yeah. it on my end. So you, yeah. you gave it a 19, which is, I mean, it's, it's tied with new England's Drake may it's behind Penix McCarthy and Caleb Williams in that order for you. Uh, so it's tied for fourth. Uh, but it is there's a significant amount of separation between that and the Washington situation for Dave Daniels. Yeah. Is that our big takeaway coming out of this project? Is like Jaden Daniels very clearly in the worst position of all these guys? Yes. Yes. Because I mean, I, everything I gave else is fairly close. Five. Right. I was lower it's, than that. I was 14 not... and a half. Yeah, Daniels was a 14 and a half for both of us. Our next lowest were... I have Denver next lowest, but it's still three and a quarter points higher than than Washington. And I've got Drake yeah. May and New England within a half a point, and you have them equal grades. So I think, so. can you do the math on this real quick? My one to five, Penix to Knicks is separated by what? Like maybe two points. Uh, one to five is two and a half points. But five and to six and is four and a half points. Yeah. And my one to Not my cool. one to five is separated by three point seven five points, and then it's three point two five points down to six. So it's at least the very top to the next to last is at least equidistant. And I'm rounding here. No math people come at me there because I know that's not exact. <laughs> It's essentially equidistant one to five from five to six. You've taken a commanding lead in the more generous grader. Commanding. Yeah. Taking command. Fitting. Taking command. Uh, a point zero seven lead. Your <laughs> average grade through 27 situations now is 18.95. My average well, grade is an 18.88. So I have all I have five of these six situations is above average based on my historical grading. Yes. Now I will say this is where you get into mean, median, and mode, right? Are you familiar? Heard about this yeah, when I was in like school. fifth yeah. grade math or whatever, right? The yeah, mean yeah. is the yeah. average. The median is like the number distribution and like where the middle is amongst all the, the number distribution. Um your median grade is a 19.75. So of the 27 grades that you've given, the exact in the middle grade is a 19.75. But if you average all of them together, your average is an 18.95. So the 2022 Justin Fields, 10.75. Oh. And the 2021 Zach Wilson, 12. Killers. Grades dramatically skew the average versus kind of the middle ground of all the grades that you've given. Thank you for that analysis. I'm in the same boat. I, I had Justin Fields 2022 with a 10.5, and I had 2021 Zach Wilson with a 13 and a half. Those are the two lowest grades that each one of us had given. It was those two situations. Aged well. Aged well. Not all of it does. We'll see what does out of this group. You can follow along for the journey. And in the next several weeks, we will get into some other young quarterbacks and their situations as we grade their entire teams. You have that to look forward to. But that's going to do it for us here. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We are Locked on NFL Scouting. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make it a great rest of your day. We are out of here.